Hi everyone, I hope everyone's having a great day. In this video, I'm going to be breaking down PSTV and um, basically how I decided not to trade it and exactly why I didn't choose to enter a day trade um, in this stock. Um, and I'm going to be breaking down this little area over here. But before we do that, um, let's go into why it's up on the day and the overall day, you know, kind of chart pattern of it. So it had news of some new drug or something like that it made and is selling something like that. Nothing crazy. Um, just a little catalyst like that. It had a nice run all the way up to $1.06 a share. Um, it was up like 50, 50 so a percent at one point. It was up a decent bit. Um, but then pulled back, sold off, um, and then started to recover. Pulled back again, and then um, now, you know, dipped down. So basically what I did, I, I looked at it. I found it when it was right in this area. And I was actually debating on whether to take a day trade in it to see if it would repeat its pattern. You know, sold off, recovered, had a nice spike. It sold off, recovered, had a nice spike. But that wasn't the case. Um, and instead of day trading it, I actually decided not to. Here's why. So basically, I decided to look at the downside of it. So overall, direction's not in my favor. It's going against me. So... I don't really want to enter a trade when the direction is going against me. Um, there's no confirmation, no consolidation, nothing like that. So it kind of is, it's kind of like equivalent to trying to catch a falling knife, which doesn't really work out too well. Um, it's trading below the middle VWAP, which is a bearish signal. I'm not sure how good you guys can see the volume bars down here, but the volume bars are super low. Um, so that's definitely a concern. There's no real good volume there. Um, and then it also is trading below the 10 EMA, and it's also trading below the, let me see if I can find it, where is the 20 EMA? The 20 EMA is, uh, hold on one minute, oh, it's a perp, wait, no, VWAP, VWAP, oh, I don't have the 20 EMA, I just have the 10 EMA, but it's trading below the um, 10 EMA. And it broke below this key support level right here. So from its previous dip, I draw I drew a support line. Um, this is kind of a key support line because it's where it found a support after its last sell off. It broke below this, um, and now is still selling off. So you never want to enter a stock as it breaks a crucial support level um, because chances are it's just going to keep knifing um, and keep selling off. It's just too much risk to try to enter as a dip buy. Um, you know, you kind of want to see some confirmation and with the overall direction going against you, uh, it's just not that safe of a trade to be taking because um, theoretically, if it broke support once, it's going to break it again. Um, and another key point we can look at is um, before you enter any trade, you can look at where it's getting rejected. So it hit a high up here, got rejected. It tried to hit that high again and got rejected, rejected. So. Um, a key point here is if it gets rejected more than once um, and it gets rejected on the second try to break out to retest it, chances are it's not going to be able to break above it um, because if it would, if it was able to break above it, it would have. Um, it obviously can't because it's just not enough buying pressure and there's like a wall of sellers um, that are preventing it from, you know, breaking above that. So that would be kind of a red flag right here. I like to pay attention to this, how many times it gets rejected up here at a previous, um, you know, resistance level. So that's definitely something you want to look at and pay attention to. Um, also, you just want to be patient and wait for the right setup to present itself. Um, honestly, I do like and um, think it's kind of a good way to trade is by, you know, obviously when the stock's spiking, if you get in at the wrong time, you know, you, and it pulls back, you can, you know, get caught at a high price and then end up losing a lot of money. So another way to do it is after the stock has its nice run, after it sells off a little bit, finds a solid support, if and only if the chart pattern still, you know, looks like a good setup, get in once it kind of pulls back a little bit and finds a support. But the key thing is, is waiting for a little bit of confirmation. You need to see confirmation. So what would confirmation be? Um, that would be a break above the 10 EMA, um, that would be the RSI looking good, that would be strong volume bars, a break above the middle VWAP, finding hold, finding and holding a solid support, making higher highs with the candlestick. So um, if you zoom in closely and you see, we'll just do an example like a nice green candlestick right here, 
and then you know holds this kind of support area and a nice green candlestick there you want to look for just kind of a good setup to get into um and you never want to rush into these type of day trades where you're buying it after it kind of pulls back a little bit just because they're super risky so you don't want to enter ones like this where it's constantly getting rejected and trading below cru crucial levels um because that's just bearish and is you know the direction is not in our favor and it really just isn't worth our time or money to try to enter a day trade yes it could bounce a little bit but theoretically it's not going to have that big breakout that we all want you know that huge nice 20 percent breakout or something like that we're not really going to see it on a play like this so i'm not going to enter it i'm trying to stay really selective and stay disciplined with plays like this just because let's have some perspective to the overall market condition um you know the state of the economy and um you know around the world everywhere is just kind of like pretty choppy right now and a mess so um you know day to day we don't really realize that but you know that definitely does have an effect on the way these stocks trade so you definitely want to keep that in the back of your mind and not forget about it even if we get a nice runner like this um also as you can see it's after it broke that crucial support it kind of just kept selling off um, it's still pulling back now. We still have no support. So, you know, trying to buy a tra any trade, you can use a setup on any trade. Um, and buying anything blindly like this is just not a good idea. Um, it's just, you, you want to be patient and wait for the confirmation. These setups aren't good. Um, don't really trade them like this. So just kind of keep that in the back of your mind. And remember what these indicators tell you and what they represent. A lot of times people try to look at the bullish side a little too much and be like, oh, well, once it breaks the 10 EMA, it should rip and, you know, go up and get, you know, break past the middle of the Well, that would be great, but why try to predict what's going to happen? Instead, just react. That way there, you're not really wrong. So that's kind of a key point there. Um, so I hope you guys learned something new in this video. It was kind of all over the place. Just a reminder, um, today I haven't found any good setups to day trade. Make sure you be selective just because the overall market conditions, like I said, and um, just wait for those good days and take advantage of the good trades. I'm trying to stay disciplined and get in good habits after having um, two big red trades last week. So I definitely don't want to, um, you know, take a red trade on, um, you know, on any stock and I want to form good habits. So right now I'm just watching the market and taking notes which is something that's definitely a great thing to do if there's no plays um, to trade. But that's all for this video. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to drop a like and subscribe. And I'm definitely going to be making a video on APDN again later today. Thanks for watching.